Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are looking forward to understand some fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter five talking about the test management and looking forward to on the next topic which is 5.5 version control and here we'll be trying to understand what does versioning means all about and what does the version control stand for. To talk about the version control, the most important thing here we need to understand is what exactly this control is all about. Now the control is more of like in the world of testing, it is to more of how to take care of something, right? You know, when you, when you talk about monitoring and monitoring showcasing you a deviation, you take a control action, which is more of like a guiding or corrective actions taken to overcome the deviations than the schedule plan. Right, similarly, the version control is more about controlling the various versioning of different entities, different work products which you create as a part of your entire life cycle. And today, we are referring to especially the testing work products uh, which are being created as a part of our life cycle, but it is not limited to that. There are several work products in the entire software development life cycle and everything has to be uh, managed through the version control. So what exactly version is all about a version is basically is is a kind of modification as a kind of revision which is done on any work product so for an instance if i have written a particular requirement and have provided all the necessary details for it and i just create or call it out as version 1.0 right that's the first time a requirement has been written and tomorrow we have further discussions on top of it and there are some modification which could be modification relates here to adding a new piece of information deleting something which is existing in the requirement or editing a particular requirement right a, a line of it also so any kind of modification which takes place as a part of the requirement it will be called as a new change or modification and this modification will not be just done how you manage your uh, word document or presentation just kind of like edit delete and just save it right now here in our process we create a new version of it for example 1.1 so 1.0 was the initial version and as and when we make any kind of changes addition deletion editing uh, of existing data we we create a new version of it that's called as 1.1 and similarly if it gets further modified we call it as 1.2 1.3 1.4 if this requirement is completely transformed like earlier the expectation was to you know get login page now we're talking about sign up then it turns out to be 2.0 there was there's some kind of complete transformation in that feature uh, than the earlier right so the versioning part is completely different thing which my uh you know release management team will take care of they will let you know about uh, what kind of versioning should be used sometimes the tools are used to do the same job and they trigger a new version every time you make a change now the question is why this version control is necessary right so we understand the version control is all about managing the history of revision on any work product where version can be refer referred to as a revision on a per work product, right? And work product could be anything, right? We can talk about a story, we can talk about a code, we can talk about requirements, design, test cases, test plan, project plan, any any work product, any document which is created in the life cycle is a candidate of versioning, right? Now, what could be the benefits of it? Of course, managing versions of any entity helps you to determine what has changed. If I just overwrite a documentation, for example, I'm writing a Word document and I wanted to make a change there. I just changed and saved it. I don't have any kind of traces that what was there earlier. I don't have any kind of reference which can tell me that what did you have before and what do you have after 10 days when you modified it, right? It's, it's only limited to your sharp memory if you can really remember what all changes you have been making every day on that document. But the point is here having the versions will create a copy of each change separately. Now it becomes very simple to compare two different versions to understand, okay, what's the change between 1.1 and 1.4 or 1.3 and 1.4? So if, for example, different work products are managed by different stakeholder or different 
uh, people in the organization and you just get a notification that, hey, there's a new version on the requirement, but you are not the one who did it. There's a business analyst who is managing the requirement. There's a product owner who is managing the user stories, but you being a test engineer, you're just given a notification or you've been just told that, hey, there is a re revision on the requirement. But what was the change? I can see the new requirement, but point is, what was it earlier? Because I've already written test cases on top of it. Do you think the change requires me to write a new test? The business analyst would say, oh, that you can figure out. The so point here is that you can quickly go there in the version control and compare the 1.3 with 1.4, and you can see the highlighting changes between the two versions that, hey, these are the three new lines which are added in 1.4, but was not there in 1.3. And that's where you get the clarity of oh, these are the three new lines. Now, based on that three lines, what do you think? Do you need new test cases to cover that change or your existing test cases are enough. But this is completely dependent on having traceability between the requirement and the test cases. If you have mapped your test cases back to that of the requirement, you will be able to figure out what new changes, not new, what the change has invited. Whether you need to add a new test case or delete a new test, delete the existing test cases which are no longer required because of the change, or maybe the existing test cases will still be fine. Right, so that's a different story altogether. But the point here is the version control helps an individual to understand what has changed, which is not done by you. So version control will bring all that information and give you the tracking of that until unless it is done. If it is not done, then certainly you don't have a track of what has been modified and how. On the same note, uh, it can also help you to reduce invalid defects. Now, what do you mean by invalid defects here? That means the defects have been reported, but being rejected by the development team. Now, for an instance, when I create a defect, when I was testing a build uh, or a code version 1.5, right? And I was testing this build 1.5 and I got a defect, I reported to the developer, but developer was working on 1.6 and he tried reproducing the defect and he says, no, I did not get any defects so rejected. For me, it is working fine. Now the problem here is a testing team thinks it is a defect because it is, but development team justifies that, no, the defect is difficult to be reproduced. I don't see them. Uh, even if I'm trying to, you know, iterate your steps, I see it is working. So there's no problem. Now the question is, until unless we capture the versions, you, you cannot clarify this rejection. So the point here is that you were testing 1.5, but when the developer was reproducing the defect, he or she was reproducing it in 1.6, which accidentally had the fix involved. So the defect no longer existed. So we sometimes compare these versions that, hey, the defect was reported in 1.5 and you are reproducing it 1.6. Good that the defect does not exist in 1.6, but let's, let us let you know that this is something which is resolved accidentally. In 1.5, it exists. So it helps a developer also deep dive and understand, though it, it's not existing in 1.6, but the point is, do we really have this problem somewhere hidden beneath? So they can look into 1.5 and try to see that what exactly is the issue. Now, just because we had versions, the developer can go back to a previous version and check the issue. Right? We can highlight to the developer that, hey, my defect is on 1.5. Are you sure you're looking at that version of your code? Then he said, oh, no, I was looking at 1.6. Now makes sense. Let me go back to 1.5 and reproduce. Oh, yes, I see the defect. So anyways, 1.6 has the resolution, but let us deep dive and see what exactly the problem is. So it can help you to reduce a lot of invalid defects, which we negotiate on or you know, have a lot of contradictions sometime. And also something unique about this is generally we have learned as a part of the test process, most of our tools are implemented during test implementation phase as a part of the environment readiness or preparation, right? But this is the tool, right? We cannot do manual versioning because sometimes you can skip a version and that could be very, very challenging. So we make use of version control tools as a part of your test management tool or separate tools to do the versioning. So every time you make a change, a new version will be automatically created. 
Now these tools are the only tools which are selected, shortlisted and deployed. That means implemented right at the planning phase. So it's not something which happens at a later point of time. It happens much, much earlier because even project plan is a document and can be revised, right? So it's just not limited to test cases, test reports, defect reports, etc. Every single work product is a candidate of version control and thus the version control tools are rolled out right at the beginning of the project itself. So only tool which is selected and implemented right at the planning phase is the version control tool. Now I hope you got a good understanding of what exactly version control stands for and how it could be beneficial to an organization at any point of time. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.